Hi everyone and welcome to this video presentation. Again, we are coming to you from our base in New Zealand. So wherever you are in the world, welcome to this video. It is another video where we chat with someone, an expert in the immigration industry in New Zealand in terms of the legal requirements, visa requirements, etc. Now, if you don't know me already, I am Ralsi van der Marwe, the co-founder of the Migration Mentor Limited. We are a New Zealand-based company with a team right across the world and we specialized in helping immigrants become successful citizens. And part of our big part of our job is helping people find jobs, but also another big part is to help them through many of the other parts of the immigration process. One of those um, parts is the legal immigration process as far as it pertains to the visas, the residence applications and so forth. And of course, we chat to different specialists in this industry around the world from time to time. Today, again, I am privileged to be joined again by Dominic Rulofser from Auckland Immigration Services in New Zealand. Um, she and her team is based in New Zealand. She is a licensed immigration advisor and she's going to help us talk about a very topical topic at the moment. And it's how these lockdowns affect, you know, the processing of visas, residence applications and so forth. So, Dom, welcome again on the call. It's great to speak to you again. We are in lockdown in New Zealand. Can you believe it? We never thought this is going to happen. It feels really, really weird. But um, for the time being, please introduce yourself just quickly so everyone, all the folks out there can know who you are. Welcome on the call. Thank, thank you very much, Sir Alsi. Um, yes, as, as you mentioned, I'm a licensed immigration advisor. I've been a licensed immigration advisor registered in 2016. I have a lovely team of ladies in the office um, with me in Auckland Immigration Services. So anybody that wants to find out a bit more about us, welcome to go onto our website and have a look. Um, I help clients from all over the world, which is really exciting and it's really good to get um, positive results for, for those clients. Even although we are always in challenging circumstances, it seems to be since uh, last year, beginning of last year with the lockdowns. And as you mentioned, who would have thought that we're back in lockdown level four so quickly? Um, but that also just shows to where we are at, right? So things can change really, really quickly and without um, planning as such. And I think that's probably the biggest lesson that um, that we've learned over the last year and a bit is that even although there's a lot of plans in place with the government, maybe reopening borders, et cetera, I don't think anybody is, um, is, is able to really give specific, di uh, definite dates as to when, when things happen because of this, uh, uh, lockdown and it just it's really just depend on the situation in, in New Zealand and in the rest of the world so we really live day by day but um, yeah it's still an exciting although challenging industry to be in. It is it is it is um, funny to think that you know we were just going towards the end of the year and in the beginning next year and opening the borders and the plans there and then snap lockdown in New Zealand but on the flip side, it's good to know that we're doing something so constructive to be able to manage it. And it looks like we're on top of it, hopefully. Yes, um, yes. But I think we are moving towards um, seeing more better times beginning of next year. In the mm -hmm. meantime, right around the world, um, there's these lockdowns. We all know the word lockdown by now. Um, and it has a major impact on businesses in particular. You know, everyone has learned to work from home in the last 18 months. I think that's become the norm basically around the world for anyone in business that can work from home they do work from home and obviously immigration new zealand who is responsible for processing many of the residence applications visa applications and a lot of other things is just another business that's been impacted by these lockdowns and not being able to do their work as they normally would expect to do it so um, given that we can expect some delays in some of the processing of these things now, um, this can impact, you know, people um, in a big way in terms of how the visas are processed, how their lives are impacted. And we know there's a huge delay, there's huge things happening because of the backlogs that's been created by the situation. So in, in general, Dom, just how has this impacted immigration and their processing of different you know matters in terms of immigration paperwork and processes what is your experience of how that has impacted immigration new zealand's work yeah so i think um last year as you mentioned all businesses learned quite a number of things right and so did immigration new zealand so last year perhaps they were really unprepared for the the lockdown and people having to to remain at, at home 
But since then, they've obviously made plans for people to be able to be working remotely at home, still on online applications. So that's probably the biggest benefit that we've gained is that it's the second lockdown as such, where previously we didn't have the ability for, for immigration officers to work remotely. We now have that they are able to work remotely. The call center is able to work remotely from home. Um, but the biggest thing is obviously in a level lockdown three and four, folk are not at the office. So they're not physically at the office and they're not able to then receive uh, documents, the, the paper-based uh, documents and work on those paper-based uh, documents. So specific branches around New Zealand may be in different lockdown levels, depending on you know what the, the, the level lockdown is in Auckland versus mm -hmm. the rest of the country. Um, but the most common effect then would be that physical applications, and we're talking about the most common ones being the skilled migrant residency from work, uh, variation of conditions, for example, permanent resident um, applications, as well as things like medical and character waivers, um, and then the new streamlined paper-based essential skills work visa applications. Those are not being able to be worked on because they're paper-based and they are in the office and the, of the officials are not able to go into the office to actually work on those paper-based. So your online applications, those might be going through quicker because people are able to work on it remotely because everything's online, but the paper-based not. Um, in addition, you have other auxiliary services, if you would like to call it that, such as maybe returning on phys of physical documents, that can't take place either. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a number of things that are impacted with regards to the processing as well as the, the actual um, auxiliary services around Immigration New Zealand. So if you think about, you know, even the couriers, if you wanted something to be couriered to, to Immigration New Zealand, you've got to call them, arrange them. That could be delayed as well for them to be able to get, uh, collect the documents from your office or your home um, because they're obviously very busy and they're a lot busier than they were previously. But even when they mm. fetch those documents, those documents are basically sitting at the courier depot. They're not being um, received being by Immigration New Zealand as such. So we do expect, obviously, larger backlogs for the paper-based applications. Before the lockdown, we had, or we were seeing around a four to five weeks before the physical documents of residency applications were actually lodged in the system. So there was already a, quite a backlog wow. at that time. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what this impact is going to be because obviously applications are still being lodged. They're still being sent into the, the offices, even although they're sitting at the courier depot. Once things are in a state where they can have people going back to the offices, then they'll start working through that backlog again. Okay. Yeah, it it is it is a shame, you know, that um, there is there's been a backlog because as a result of the previous lockdown that we had in New Zealand, and I mean we're not as impacted as many places around the world, but now it is again impacting those paper based applications and in a big way, let alone anything else. Now I know yeah. that you said to me earlier that you were looking at the stats that um, you know in different categories and what's happening compared to what has been happening before. Just give us a yeah. little bit of that information. Will you be publishing that information for our viewers that they can get it somewhere sometime? And yes. you know what what, mm. what will happen with that? That'll be interesting to see. Yes, yes, yes. That's something that I'm really, really keen on sharing with um, with my clients as well as the people that are looking at the videos, etc. I think it will be a separate separate video. I'm still busy working through okay. that um, analysis of the statistics. It's mm -hmm. recent statistics that I've gained from Immigration New Zealand, specifically regarding the number of applications that are on hand. Okay. So what I'm trying to do with that is to ascertain um, where we're at with the, the actual applications and basically mm -hmm. try and determine if we're at the same level of um, applications being receipted, how many applications can be assessed at any given time, and what is the trend going forward with regards to that residency okay. application. So I'm really excited to share that once I've worked through the, the full analysis okay. of the, the statistics. Um, and as I said, I've only recently received it from Immigration New Zealand. So it's really recent stats Fresh. about that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'll, I'll, when, when you've got it ready, I assume in the next few days, we'll get it from Dom and then we will publish it here, wherever you're watching this video, you know, if you're watching YouTube, Facebook, wherever it, it is, um, and we'll give you that information of where we're going to publish it, because it will be really interesting to see those things and how it impacts going forward. If that backlog is getting smaller or is it getting bigger, <laughs> that'll yes, be, yes. that'll be 
a bit disconcerting to see that happening. Now, I know that there are different um, levels of lockdown through the country at the moment. You know, certain parts of the country here has gone into a different level of lockdown since last night. So it's a little bit more open. They're saying level four with takeaways. That's level three. But um, how I know also that there are different branches across the country for immigration New Zealand. So do you think that they are going to work in different ways and process these things, these things in different ways in different levels? Yeah, it will be interesting to see because we have, for example, um, variation of conditions is a, is a prime example. That's a paper based application. Now, last year, I think it was around May or June, immigration actually brought about an online uh, manner of, of dealing with the variations because things were so oh, dynamic okay. and sporadic at that time. But that was only for a short period of time that they actually allowed that. They went then back to the variation of conditions paper based, which was also, uh, there was quite a, a huge backlog before the lockdown mm -hmm. on those applications. Now, there are two different branches, the one being in Henderson that actually deals with the variation and the other branch is in Christchurch that deals with the, 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 the variations. So it'll be interesting to see whether immigration actually do transfer those applications to, for example, Christchurch, if the Auckland branch is still closed for a longer period. Mm -hmm. So once um, Christchurch maybe goes to level two, but level Auckland may yeah. be in level three, that they can't go to the, the office, they may transfer those applications across to them. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are interim processes that are being uh, devised by Immigration New Zealand for uh, example for the reconsideration processes. So various applications that are trying to devise different processes that allow for still processing of those applications because some of these applications are really really urgent and can't wait. So I'm not talking about the normal work visas as such. There are cases obviously with, with normal work visas which are really urgent. Um, so I encourage people to speak to their licensed immigration advisor or their lawyer, mm. if a case is really urgent for them to actually progress with that mm. application, because there could be yeah. things that, that are possible to push that application forward. And Immigration okay. New Zealand have said that they, yeah, they have actually acknowledged that they will take a pragmatic approach, which is oh. really you know, pleasant to know that they would actually yeah. do that in cases where mm. it's required, because yeah. these are, you know, we're talking about employment, we're talking about people becoming liable for deportation if the, the mm -hmm. immigration status becomes illegal. So um, yeah. we can't sit back and wait for lockdown levels to lower. We've got to do something while we can, okay. even though it's level lockdown three or four. Yeah, that was my next question, you know, that we know that some of these things won't be processed because obviously these people are not at the office. But what happens in the case of real emergencies where a person, there is a, maybe a variation or some kind of visa or some kind of paperwork that needs to be done for an urgent matter? What happens yeah. then? Would they be open to do something about that, you know, even if they have to? Um, but you've just answered that question in terms of they will be lenient and looking at it. So in that case, should someone um, immediately get in touch with a licensed immigration advisor so that they have the assistance that they need to be able to deal with Immigration New Zealand? Or um, should they just go straight to Immigration New Zealand? What is your best advice? Well, I think the call centres might be pretty pretty busy at the moment. So if a person has the patience to, to, to call the call centre and, and try and find it out and figure it out yourself. Um, you know, work always expands when, when lockdown mm. is, um, is involved. Uh, I see with mm. the amount of work that we need to do and the hours that we need to put in now, uh, everything is just so much uh, more difficult and tedious and so much longer mm. to actually process. But in cases where things are really urgent, if you, if you don't manage to, to do it yourself or get any, um, any successful mm. outcome in that, then really, you know, it probably is worth your while to contact a licensed immigration advisor and see if they can't do something mm. for you because we okay. obviously have the, the, the manners, we know what the, the, the new approaches would be or the new processes. Um, we have the, the, the insight of many licensed immigration advisors uh, because we have obviously contact with, with a number of licensed immigration advisors and lawyers. So we can actually leverage off the, the knowledge that, that they have gained or we have gained mm -hmm. by the different processing as such. So um, mm -hmm. definitely contact. If it's an urgent case, don't sit and wait. Contact a licensed immigration advisor or lawyer or contact the immigration um, New Zealand call centre mm -hmm. and see if you can't progress with that that application as soon okay. as possible. All right, don't wait just because of the lockdown. It's also yeah. something you know now that you're saying that you have access and you you sort of you know you know things around the immigration um, policies and things and what's happening in the background and behind the scenes that we don't know on the street. 
you as licensed immigration advisors and immigration lawyers. Um, we've heard some rumors and noise about the new skilled migrant system and the work that, that Immigration New Zealand has been doing about it. There's some leaks about what they're facing and what they're going to put out there. Have you heard anything in terms of what they're going to do or um, what they're proposing for the new system yet? Do you know anything yet? Yeah, nothing has nothing has been published. I think there's a lot of word on the street, but um, what, there was an article that I actually shared on my Facebook page, the Auckland Immigration Services Facebook page, recently, which um, is an article that was written by a publisher that that they apparently there was a leak to the Immigration New Zealand website of the new criteria of the skilled migrants. So that was really interesting to to find out. Obviously, they removed it from the website as soon as they realised that it was published. Um, it could have been sort of in, you know, it was in the waiting in to be burden. published. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the waiting to be published and somebody, you know, published it and made Pushed it live instead of just putting it in the test system or whatever the case may be. Um, but that does sort of give an, in, an indication to us that they already know what the requirements are going to be. They already have actually figured it out. Um, they really, yeah. maybe maybe they're just testing the, the skilled migrant calculator, but it seems to be that there has been specifics already um, bedded down. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of waiting for that to be published now by the Immigration mm -hmm. Minister and Immigration New Zealand. And we don't yet have um, details of a date of when that should be. There is a lot of pressure on, on the government to make, yes. it, um, mm -hmm. to make it known. And we've heard, you know, often that soon is when, when they'll be publishing that. So I yeah. would expect that it should be before the end of the year in any case that, yeah. that we do hear something, and specifically now that we know that you know they do have the, the the information at hand and they have actually already probably vetted out all the the, the points yeah. as they they would be in future the criteria yeah I, I know that there's a lot of people sitting in that pool waiting for the EOIs to be processed. You know, they're pretty anxious. They don't know what to do. Um, things are not happening or nothing seems to be happening in the background. What is your advice for someone in that position? Should they throw the baby out with the bathwater and just give up and up sticks and leave? Or should they just wait it out and see what happens? Because it's probably closer than we think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely think it's a lot closer than what uh, than what we actually, you know. And, and I think, unfortunately, we've been expecting it to to happen well, a lot of people last year were saying that that um, I think there was talk of June, July, and I don't know where they got those specific dates, but I think that's the problem is that we've always anticipated a date and then it hasn't actually happened. And then we mm -hmm. found out in October that the criteria will actually be changing, and that's the first time that we heard that the criteria mm -hmm. will be changing. But since October last year, it's almost a year later, one would have expected that they've actually vetted out all the, the changes, nutted out the, mm -hmm. the new criteria. I think the... Um, you know, it, it is definitely worthwhile waiting um, if yeah. that is what we want. Mm -hmm. So if a person is eager to 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 gain residency and apply for residency in, in New Zealand, then yes, perseverance mm -hmm. is going to be required. I mean, Hopefully. especially during these times, a person has to persevere if that's what you want. And I suppose you need to ask yourself, how badly do you want it? You know, And, and I think it's very mm -hmm. similar to the, um, the folk that are split in, in split families. That is really, really, very sad. And it's very yes. difficult for families that are split. But if we think about it, it's already almost been two years as such. We might just be at the tail end of this um, and, and to, to you need yes. to decide whether you want to give everything up, you know, for maybe six months more or um, do you rather want to sit it through for another six months? And I know it's difficult, difficult questions to ask yourself, but those are the type of things that will probably make your yeah. decision based on whether you want to, you know, for, mm -hmm. for a long-term uh, gain, still have the short-term pain. So I say yes. short-term, I think every day feels like a year to people that are split in there, you know, know. For the families. Yeah. It's really awful. Um, but in the longer term of things, a person unfortunately can't do anything about that at mm. this stage unless yeah. Immigration New Zealand start making those provisions for, for the, the opening of the different sec you know, sections and, and people to be able to be reunited with one another. Yeah, yeah. I know I've spoken to several people um, in, the, in the last few weeks in terms of um, they were clients of ours who gained the job office and came in just before COVID or a couple of months before and now qualify for residence and, you know, have to apply for residence or in the process. And now they're thinking, but they split families. Family is still back where I come from and, and the main applicant is here, principal applicant is here. And they are just at the wit's end in terms of, you know, being really um, separated from their family is really not a good situation. But my advice to these people were, if you can, stick it out. Just think about or compare 
why you came in the first instance, what drove you through all this hardship to be able to be here. And um, if you have to up sticks now and leave everything and go back, you'll just have to start at square one again or be in that situation that in the beginning was the reason why you left. Yes, so just yes. um, sticking it out is possibly the, it's hard, but it's probably going to be not hard for too long compared to yeah. what you're going to face if you do go back. Yeah. So that's I the other that's, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very important as well. And, and what, you, what you're mentioning now is you need to remember the whys, you know, the whys. why yeah. have you made mm -hmm. the decision? And I can yeah. tell you now, um, probably 99% of people listening to this as well is because of their children. That's that's yes. the why. You know, the yeah, why totally. is it's not necessarily mm -hmm. because of them. It's because of their children yeah. and the future for their children. So yeah. that is still there. The future yeah. for their children is still possible yeah. if you have stuck it out. You know? Yeah. And if you are here in New Zealand, your EOI is not being processed or you have any of other these difficulties um, happening, if you're listening to this video, remember that that issue, if it's not at the point where you're facing calamity, catastrophe, like a deportation or whatever else, the the fat lady hasn't sung yet you know you're not in trouble yet you you if you still have a job if you're still here yes it is hard with being without your family but you actually compared to the rest of the world and where people come from who has done this for those wise they are in a worse position than you potentially in some of those countries where we those countries are facing 50 percent unemployment i've just be, spoken to a south african client who mentioned to me 44 percent unemployment someone in egypt someone in brazil and colombia the the, the um, situations they are far worse for those people in terms of everything else compared to just you not being able to get an EOI through the system in the next couple of months. So do see some perspective here and um, just just look at really what is what is going on for you. Is it that bad or is it the question mm. of just biting on and keep on going for a couple of months? And I think we will do see the end of this part in a couple of months time. Otherwise, the government will probably not be the government anymore. <laughs> People would like them if they don't if they don't give attention to this issue. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of that, just one last quick question. I know that there are some people who've obviously, you know, pulled the plug and are waiting for refunds and things like that and documents processing. Do do you know if some of those systems and things are still working while we are in lockdown? Are they still being processed? What's happening with those? Yes, yes. So the, the refunds and um people can go and have a look on the Immigration New Zealand website if they're not sure whether they're going to get a refund or not. But it's basically for folk that are uh, offshore that haven't been able to That's uh, right. get a visa yeah. outcome. So they've yeah. lodged their visa, but they haven't yet gained a, a visa outcome. So Immigration New Zealand are lapsing those applications and refunding the fees automatically to, to the people that are yeah. still offshore. So, okay. you know, those, the, the, okay. the, the fact that we've just spoken about people, you know, wanting to, to return mm -hmm. to their home countries, those people are the ones that are really, really in dire situations because they've, yeah. they've obviously made plans. Some of them have even resigned from their work in yes. their home country and, and they haven't even set foot on New Zealand soil yet. But, um, the good news is yes. that Immigration New Zealand will be refunding those fees and that is still taking place. Um, even during lockdown. So that is that is yeah. still occurring. Yeah. I have so many clients in that position who have left their jobs, who have given up their jobs and have sold their houses and are living with family without jobs in countries where COVID is out of hand. So they are in a far worse position than people here who still have a job but just can't get the EOI processed, you know. So they, you, you're not in that bad a position yet. I know it's difficult, but just compare yourself mm. to other people who would wish to be in your position if you really think yes. about throwing everything else. You've come this far, um, just mm. stick it out. Um, we've also talked about, you know, where people wanting to move to a new region and they need to access different services in terms of having new visas or whatever else they need to do in, in their situation like for instance, JPs or other services which aren't accessible during this time of lockdown. What is your take and what is your advice to people in that situation if they're finding it difficult? What is What should they do? Yes, so there are a list of um, JPs that will electronically certify documents and electronically take a statutory, a statutory declaration. So those services are still available in limited uh, amounts. So because okay. there's a limited number of JPs that are available, I think you know it's, it's um, really prudent to say that people that are really find themselves in a position that they can't wait for the the, the levels to 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 be you know depleted to to before they actually go and see a JP, they can make use of those services as well. So if um, I have published on the Auckland Immigration Services Facebook page, 
and that's okay. actually a link to the JIP specifically that um, oh, awesome. can certify documents electronically and take um, statutory declarations electronically. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I do know of people who has just, you know, taken on a, a new job like days before we went into lockdown. So they like, sort of in between that period and they would need new visas and variations and things like that. So they're obviously going through some of these issues at the moment. So it, and they're coming from Christchurch to Auckland. So it is probably a very anxious time for them in terms of what do we do? Yeah. Are we illegal? <laughs> what do we do? Yes. Do we have a visa? Yes. How do we do these things and yeah. so forth? OK, because so that will be really move. helpful. Yeah, and but you can't move region. Um, you know, no. that's that's the other thing that's really valid is you can't move yeah. region during level lockdown three and four. I know. You possibly could you possibly could apply for a um a business exemption for travel. However, yeah. that would be just for the principal applicant, not for the full family. So if you and the family exactly. need to move from region to region, you basically stuck. So it's important again for um, your licensed immigration advisor or yourself to to get in, in in touch with the immigration officer mm -hmm. and to advise them that yes maybe you've got a visa but you can't actually fulfill the duties of that visa or you need to remain where you are whatever the case may be it, it's it's quite a tricky situation with people that are moving between regions when we aren't allowed to yeah. yes that's right okay cool mm -hmm. yes and and for everyone that information about the jp should you need to access it will be on dom's we, um, facebook page right Is yes, that where yes you're going to put yep. it dom yes, okay good yeah yeah. Okay, good. At the end of this video, we will give you all the details of where to get a hold of Dominic and her team, where to go get a hold of us, where to see our pages and, and the links and so forth. So don't worry, we will give you access to the contact information for all of us. Now, um, like we always say, for everything, you know, immigration is a tricky business. It's probably the biggest thing you'll ever do in your life, given all these complexities that go along with it in terms of everything that you're going to face and the legal challenges. My advice to people is get a licensed immigration advisor on your side as soon as possible. Whenever you have any question, that should be the first person you go to. And mm. um, now when we have lockdowns with these changes and these lockdowns and the complexities of not being the, the immigration department, not being able to, to access these things and, and process these things, it's even more important to be legal, to stay legal, to know what your rights yeah. are, to know what you need to do if it impacts you. Um, Dom, any last words for you in terms of what people need to be doing during this time of lockdown if they're in a transition situation or looking to get a visa done or um, EOI, whatever the case may be, what is the best advice for anyone in this situation who's really anxious about how it impacts them? Yeah, yeah. I think the most important is not to make assumptions. So not to make assumptions that because we have level lockdown, three and four mm. immigration are going to be forgiving if you do something that you shouldn't be doing mm. so um, rather be represented or contact immigration new zealand yourself if you if you plan to do that and make sure that you are still above board whether your your visa still meets the requirements with regards to if you are, need to move to a different um, region and you're un unable to do that that's the first thing secondly also there are um, obviously salary adjustments with COVID level, you know, level lockdowns, and it could be that your salary is adjusted, you're only getting a, a certain percentage of your normal salary. You also need to understand whether that is going to be, um, you know, oh yeah, is, is it That's going to be detrimental issue. in future applications? Mm -hmm. So it might not be right now, but it could be detrimental in future applications. So what I've basically done for my clients is I've gone through those that I know that, that could be detrimentally affected and contacted them and discussed with them, are they going to get their full salary or they're not going to get their full salary because another thing is we don't know necessarily how long it's going to be that level four is still going to be applicable in Auckland mm -hmm. so the Auckland clients may actually have an impact on their visa or their future residency mm -hmm. visa application so we need to know that up front we need to uh, deal with it up front you need to be proactive about it you can't wait for things to have mm -hmm. taken place and then try and rectify mm -hmm. it because it's too late at that time so yeah. um, yes speak to your LIA immigration lawyer make sure that whatever impacts you have with your with your salary with your job with your employer that those are worked on and you still remain legal in terms of immigration um, law yeah awesome and then also what you're doing now that you will it will lead to your residency because you know like you say for salary things it might impact on your application for residency later on so it's very yeah. important that you understand the impact of it right now and maybe able to do something about it really good yes awesome yes. Okay, I think that were all the questions that I had so far. Any Anything else from you that you think you haven't discussed? But I think we've gone through everything that I could figure out in terms of 
right now, which is going on on people's minds is how is this lockdown going to impact my uh, yeah. application and what, what do I need to do? Where do I go yeah. for help? And I think that was basically what we covered here, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It was good. Now, for everyone, like I said, we will put the links for both Dom and myself at the end of this video. You can view the links there and tell you where you can contact us if you need to get a hold of us. Um, Dom and her team are licensed in immigration advisors for New Zealand. We help people in immigrating around the world. We specialize in helping them find jobs. There's lots of things happening at the moment. We've had major successes. I think 12 or 14 in the last three months of 18 people have joined us. So it is awesome to see that actually things are moving things are happening despite these lockdowns and the bad news we're hearing there is a lot of, um, still happening out there um from us um have a great day wherever you are we will post the next video and i'm sure it will be about those um statistics from immigration new zealand especially for our uh, new zealand immigration clients to see what's happening behind the scenes and how things are progressing through the system until next time take care